this is Roll for Crit, and if you're registered to vote, you should go do that this week. But when you come back, you can enjoy our board game news roundup for the week of November 5th, 2018. Pandasaurus Games has released some very popular titles over the last year, including Wasteland Express and Dinosaur Island. They are now proud to announce that the designer they worked with on that, John Gilmore, is actually going to be joining them officially to look over all their games with the design. The first game they're going to be really partnering up together with is Dead Man's Cabal. This, in this game, you will actually be playing as sort of the necromancer. I'm very happy that you can now live forever, but no one wants to be friends with you. So you'll be bringing back people from the dead to have your own little party and your own friends. Something we can all relate to. This is, I think, a very co more common practice we're seeing where companies are sort of bringing on people they've worked with a couple of times as sort of the head developer, trying to make sure maybe uh, the games keep the design practice sort of maybe consistent amount of games. I think it's a great idea, especially, uh, we, I think we've seen that work very well with CMON. Right, they brought Eric Lang mm -hmm. on as their as a kind of in-house consultant exactly. slash developer. Yeah, and uh, you know, they, if it's if it's working for them, if they have a good partnership, more power to them. Uh, John Gilmore, I guess, before this was really Dead of Winter was his big title, mm -hmm. uh, besides Dinosaur Island, but outside of Pandasaurus. Um, so, uh, and it sounds like from what he's what I've been reading that you know he's he talked a little bit about it on Reddit, you know, talking about mm -hmm. how he still has some other contracts in the works, other games might be coming out. Through other companies, but uh, mostly he's going to be through Pandasaurus now, and like his main role will be overseeing other people's designs, which I think is also interesting. That it's it's almost like uh, it's kind of like being a showrunner of a show versus the director of a single episode or something like mm -hmm. that. You're you're kind of overseeing everything, which must be a really exciting and cool job, as well as probably uh, hard <laughs> to a lot of a little bit of pressure on you to make right. sure everything's good. But it is also probably nice for him because it's more of a um, secure. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't have to worry about. You're not freelancing. You don't have to worry if the game's gonna, if a company's gonna pick up your game or not. You, you that got being it. said, I mean, I, we've already seen he's got a huge pedigree of games we love. And I'm sure that will or already have popped on on top ten lists. Mm -hmm. So definitely seeing someone who already can make games that have drawn people together and mechanics like that could either could easily look at people's other games and be like, I see where that's coming from, but maybe do this little tweak. So I think that will be, hopefully, make even more Pandasaurus games sort of hit the forefront of the uh, gaming sphere. Some exciting developments for Leader Games Root, the board game where you are taking control of different factions of animal creatures in the woodland forest that we really enjoyed and reviewed recently. First up, there is a new expansion that they said is going to be coming to Kickstarter in 2019 that will feature two new factions, the Moles and the Crows, as well as a brand new double-sided playing board. They've also are going to be partnering with Magpie Games to produce an RPG based on Root, a role-playing game set in that world where all of you will be playing as different Vagabonds characters from the game, trying to decide perhaps which factions you're going to ally with or maybe go your own path. Uh, so that's very exciting to see kind of uh, a different direction in that universe, in that world, which is a very welcoming, pleasing, furry, cute world. Uh, and so uh, Root, really exciting stuff. Not, I didn't think there would ever be a Root RPG, but it kind of makes sense in my head once it's laid out in front of me. Uh, what do you think? I know you, you, you said yourself when you played as the Vagabond that it was like playing a solo RPG or video game. Bit, yeah, like the video games more when I like it, it, the you know your Skyrim, your Fallout, those kind of mm -hmm. pseudo RPGs. So it doesn't seem to be that big of a leap to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm glad that there's more stuff, and I hope the, this world grows. It's always curious to see. It's very cute and adorable, mm -hmm. and more expansions, of course. The better. Yeah, they sound kind of interesting. The moles have to do with uh, burrowing around, so like probably they can you know dig through and pop up in other locations. And then the crows, they haven't, they don't have many details, but supposedly they have something to do with secrets and espionage. So there's some kind of a hidden aspect to them. Maybe you don't know where they are. Maybe it's more about stealth or something like that. I don't know. Well, what might be interesting, we'll see, obviously. Mm -hmm. But one of the, uh, one playing this game, if you haven't watched our review yet, uh, the Vagabond, going back to what we were talking about him. He sort of actually plays off every group uh, a bit more than the rest. Like, the others may be like, I'm not going to kill you, but I'll kill them. But the Vagabond's literally like, make my stuff so I can give you stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So the crows could actually be something similar to that. They trade in secrets. Sort of like, all right, we're going to give you maybe these secret cards or something that give you some powers or not, but you got to do this. So I could see them actually becoming like a similar to the Vagabond faction. Maybe less about board presence 
mm-hmm. and more about like just pulling the strings and stuff, which yeah. I think could be a fantastic addition. Maybe a, some, a different way of forming alliances also with right. other players. Exactly. Just like the Vegabon one, they have their own little alliance chart. As long as you're, we're talking about Root, another thing I think people should check out, if you go to the Root website, they have uh, scenarios up there. There's going to be like a new one every month. And they put one up for Halloween, which adds uh, a trick-or-treat character that uh, goes around the board and you can, as an action, uh, give it a treat. <laughs> you give it uh, cards and, and you, you get things in exchange, but if it gets too many cards in it, whatever spot that it's in will explode, basically, <laughs> and everything, all the pieces there are removed, and you can move it yourself, too, so you can try to, like, position it in different places to mess up the other players. Mm-hmm. Uh, very amusing stuff, so uh, it's cool that they're, they're continuing to work on not just expansions, but even just online kind of print-and-play material for you to uh, expand the game with. Do you think Simon has too many zombie games, in particular with Zombicide? Well, they don't. They've actually acquired the rights to Night of the Living Dead, the sort of zombie movie that really started the zombie crawl into what we know and love with all the zombies around us today. They actually got this from Evolution USA LLC, which is sort of holds the copyrights to a lot of different things. This is actually their, not their first time working with them. They got the rights to Narco, the Netflix show, to make a good board game for that. This, as far as we know, is going to be a zombicide version for Night of the Living Dead, but because they have the rights, I'm sure they can do other things. This is definitely interesting, I said, because this is sort of the the spawn of the zomb- the popular zombie. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, that that is that. It's going it's going back to their roots. It does to me. To me, it seems like a little bit of a, a missed opportunity. Of course, you said they could make other games in the future, but to me, the you know Night of the Living Dead is a is such a very uh, kind of a small story. It's about the people are just trapped in a single house, right, during one single night, uh, and to turn that into zombicide, which I guess you I guess you could adapt that, but it's really more about the like hack and slash action kind of side of zombies as far as I know. Uh, so that's, uh, it seems like maybe a, a bit of a weird fit, but it's got d- zombie miniatures, so it's going to make them a million dollars regardless mean, of what I think. It, 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 I mean, it has zombicide on the title. So yeah. You, as someone who does like collecting, make sure they have every expansion. <laughs> Not right. that I'm saying this is a bad thing. And I would like to see them do more because as we've said, this is sort of... Um, it's like what well, it, it's a pillar of its community. It started the mm-hmm. zombie run. It is it is kind of a strange thing bec- though because uh- I, what I believed to be true and still believe to be true is that the Night of the Living Dead, that movie itself, uh, is public domain. Uh, so I would have thought anyone could make a board game based on this property. So I don't know how the, like they got like these rights were t- for a board game specifically were tied up in a different way that they had to go through something to get them. I mean, from what I'm hearing more, there's this com- like Evolution USA. Mm-hmm. They they just they take care of all the rights for. The people who own this so it might have maybe in some ways it's open like certain parts but not literally it stills from the movie kind of open maybe something yeah. like that yeah I, that, I mean that for example that comes up a lot with disney stuff like right. technically pinocchio <laughs> right is in the open but like if you take lit- stills from the pinocchio disney movie it's not right for sure yeah but uh yeah i don't know it's kind of cool what i'm curious about with you is mm. i know with some other companies you've mentioned how it's sort of annoying when you see them quickly put out copyrighted products. Mm-hmm. And Simon seems to be getting a lot more into that, dipping their toes in that. Like, I mean, I said that they had Narcos, which I don't know if you were, that was one you were demanding for a board game version of. Right. They did Kick-Ass and, of course, Game of Thrones, or I should say Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, it's, it doesn't seem quite as egregious with them because they tend to... Uh, still have a, like, their production value is always pretty good. I actually didn't really like the kick-ass board game, but I don't think it's, bec- I didn't think it was felt rushed. I just felt like it wasn't, like, a super exciting kind of a game that I was into. But, yeah, it's, uh, f- for now, I think, I think I'm <laughs> I'm okay with it. We'll see how far it and goes. Th- once again, uh, Simon, congratulations on actually getting the start of the zombies for your already huge zombie game. Let us know what you think about that expansion and also... As we were just been talking about with all of the movies, is this a good or bad thing to be seeing them in the board game universe? 
IDW Games has announced that they are working with Panda Cult Games to produce a brand new crossover board game featuring the Men in Black and Ghostbusters franchises titled Men in Black Ghostbusters Ecto Terrestrial Invasion. This is going to be a miniatures game where you will have two different teams, Ghostbusters and Men in Black. You're working together, but supposedly there may be some friendly competition between the two. They haven't released any actual gameplay details yet, just the fact that it will be a miniatures game. You can see the look and feel of it from the art that they've shown, uh, where the characters are brand new original designs based on the movies. You do have the actual characters, you know, you have J and K, you have Peter Venkman, etc. Uh, but they're kind of in a, a cutesy, cartoony style, almost like chibi looking to me. They have like big old heads. Uh, and the miniatures are going to be designed by people from Ninja Division, who did Super Dungeon Explorer, uh, which also had those same kind of big head, little people bodies, uh, miniatures design. Uh, th this I thought was cool because honestly, uh, I, years ago, thought it would be cool if these two franchises had a crossover as, I would think, a movie or a comic book or a video game even, just because they, they seem to have a lot of the same DNA. They're both sci-fi comedies of secret or not-so-secret organizations going out there in the world and taking down monsters and stuff. Uh, so it seems like a fun crossover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both are just exterminators, more or less. <laughs> right. uh, and it makes sense as a crossover, but to me, this is more of a pattern, not just for this game alone. Mm -hmm. And this is more on the Ghostbuster side, but Men in Black is sort of attached to. It seems weird that it's like very cutesy. And remember, we saw the, uh, I think it was Cryptozoic had their new card game that was also Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. And sort of the big miniatures game as well. But it's all very, like, younger... It looks like it's aimed at a young... Like, looking for a younger audience, which is weird to me. Because, I mean, if you look at the movies... I mean, while they're not R or bloody or something, mm. you know, it just, it seems very odd to me, like... I mean, it, they just want to appeal to the widest audience they can, all right? I guess yeah. what it boils down to, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, maybe, like, I guess they could, they could go for a more... Um, something like the Cryptozoic game, which was sort of... That was more like Saturday morning cartoon, I guess, which is a little... It was cartoony, but it didn't look like, like chibi again. Yeah. That's really the word. Uh, it, it's just very strange to me because in my mind, there had like the most recent is go the female Ghostbusters movie, mm -hmm. as far as I know. Like these guys have not been on the main, like main uh, on the silver screen. I have no words uh, in a long time. So you know, you think most of the, the fan base is close to our age, I would say. But uh, anyways, definitely. <laughs> I mean, in the end, as you said, it's still a cool crossover that makes perfect sense. Definitely curious to see the mechanics and they pull through on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe they can pull some uh, more evil exterminators, like add some uh, goblins and demons so they can get the Doom guy and the Goblin Slayer. <laughs> sure. This week also came with some new board game releases. We have the new chapter pack for the Game of Thrones card game, Dagger in the Dark, as well as a new rival set for the DC deck building game, Green Lantern vs. Sinestro. This is the second one, with the first one being Batman vs. Joker, a perfect if you just want to do a 1v1 sort of deck building game. We also have the Reckoners. This is sort of a superhero fighting game. It's co-op versus some crazy people who sort of look like superheroes. We talked a lot about this at Gen Con because we got a chance to play it, and we thought it was pretty fun and very interesting. And Arkham Horror 3rd Edition finally came out. I'm very excited. Got my hands on it. We need to play it a little bit before we can give us our first review about it. But this is actually not just some new little piece upgrades, but a whole new way to play the Arkham Horror game. So it is a while it has 3rd edition in the title, it really is a new game to the Arkham File series. There's a new expansion release for Imperial Settlers bringing the Amazons faction into that competitive card game. You've got two brand new Munchkin releases, Munchkin Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Munchkin 9 Jurassic Snark that lets you, you know, ride dinosaurs and things in your game. And then we're going to exit with the brand new Exit the Mysterious Museum, a new escape room in the Exit series that puts you in a museum, which is pretty neat for uh, people like us who like museums and, and secrets. Uh, so Arkham Horror I think and the Reckoners definitely the uh, the big boys this week the the big guns the big boys. oh yeah <laughs> no <laughs> uh, the Reckoners is definitely very popular junk kind of like we said we played it enjoyed it but Arkham is sort of my home and seeing it come in a whole new style 
Very excited. Scary place to live. <laughs> it is. And but, they, uh, also, it is they, it's sad they missed Halloween by a week. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they <laughs> were kind of kicking themselves for that. <laughs> and in case anyone's curious, I did actually get the deluxe sort of pre-order. So I came with the deluxe rule book. Mm. And what this rule book in, that, in essence was, was yeah. it was the same rule book for the first okay. few pages. <laughs> But the second half was really like it had a little story for each or explanation for each area. And if you remember the investigators book, which had a little story for all the investigators, it came with some for sort of the new investigators they just made. I think one of them was from this, but the other one I think was has appeared in either, I want to say Eldritch Horror, but it was like after the book was made. So it is, it's definitely uh, cool if you like that kind of lore, extra lore that they put into the world. Cool, cool. Well, if you're a person who uh, bought Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, or if you're one of those people who uh, is sticking with the 2nd Edition, or if you have any thoughts about any of our other news stories, suggestions, or just questions for us, go ahead and check out the comments below. Uh, talk about it. Talk to people. Talk about things. Uh, and, then, and then, you know, go and vote. In the polls, because it's important. All right, my name is Jonathan Estes. And I'm Will. And this was our Roll for Crit News Roundup. Don't forget to click that like button and, of course, subscribe for even more excellent videos. I subscribed and now I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs>